Hey, welcome back to my channel, Crafting with Cami. As you can see, I have my Versamat flipped over. We are going to be doing some stamping and creating our own pattern paper. I'm actually using a piece of pattern paper for my inspiration. This is from the Change of Scenery collection from Close to My Heart, and I absolutely love this kind of watercolor nature feel that it has. So I'm going to try to recreate this using my own products and make it a little bit different. I've already been playing around a little bit and I want this to be a fall inspired layout. So I will show you how I did this here, but this is just regular cardstock and then some inking. And as you can see, I messed up here. So hopefully I can strategically place a photo there to kind of hide that but let me go ahead and grab a new piece of cardstock and i'll show you how i created this so i figured doing it on a strip of cardstock would be easier than the full 12 by 12 then i can place this where i want it if i want to do a frame style i can trim it down um it right now it is 12 inches long i just have a piece of regular computer paper so that i can stamp off and not get ink all over my versa mat First, I'm bringing in the Frosted Forest, and we'll be using this tree here. I have it on a block, but I don't have it on a big enough block because all I'm focusing on is the top. I'll be using Mocha ink because I don't have all Stampin' Up's ink colors, but if you are with Stampin' Up Early Espresso, it would be the closest to Mocha. Okay, so then I'm just inking up that top portion of the tree. I want it to kind of hang off a little bit and I think I might show just a hair of that trunk on this first one. Okay and then because I don't want like a ton of leaves in front of and distracting here I'm I just stamped and fussy cut out the top of the tree you can see I used it on my last one so then I'm just going to hold that here I might do a little bit longer of one here. And then I can layer my stamping without worrying about that messy seeing even more lines, if that makes sense. They'll just kind of mesh together. So then I'll lay that over that side. This one we're gonna do quite a bit shorter. I'll go ahead. Oh. Go ahead and stamp that one maybe there. You just want to focus on getting your trunk straight up and down so you don't have leaning trees. But other than that, it's just random stamping. There's not a whole lot to it. Kind of going in different heights, making it look a little more natural. I might do another taller one. About one more. All right, remove that. And now we have our trees. From my stash, I have this little um, kind of like a paint splotch background stamp. So I am going to be using that, and I started with my Sundance. If you're stamping up, pumpkin pie, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, pumpkin pie, if you're with stamping up, would be the closest color to Sundance. So here's where I messed up on my other one. I want to do all second generation stamping. I think it adds just a little more texture and it adds multiple shades of that color. Do you see that? So it almost looks like leaves with that texture. When I stamp it the first time or with full strength, it doesn't have all of the different shades as noticeably as the second generation. And it's just darker and more full. And I just like to stamp off. And then I'm just trying to stay within those lines, but obviously it won't be perfect because I'm using a stamp. If I wanted it to be perfect, I'd probably color it in or use a water pen. And I'm filling in all of the trees, all of the leaves. But you kind of 
like my inspiration piece, that was close, like my inspiration piece, I want it to look almost like watercolor, not perfect, not, um, yeah, not very realistic. So here I'm going to be stamping off. And once you get going, you just kind of cruise along, but don't forget to stamp off if you're doing second generation because that's what I did on my last one. I forgot to stamp off once in it. I thought I ruined it, but we still have pictures to add and other embellishments, so I think we'll be able to hide it okay. You could also use like a blending brush to get this look. Um, but again, that's not as controlled either. So there's a lot of different techniques. There's also a mask that comes with this tree. So you, like a stencil mask. So you could use that too and get the colors, you know, perfectly in line with the leaves. Use your blending brush that way. But again, I kind of wanted that watercolor, not perfect kind of look. I think I'm gonna do just, there we go. You could even do like third generation. You could just keep stamping. And that's more what I did with the paprika color. I'm not even gonna wipe this off because I'm going into a darker color. I'm using paprika. Cajun Craze is a similar color. Okay, so here I'm just kind of I'm stamping off more than once on my scratch paper because this is so dark. But I love the kind of brown hues it gives it. And I'm kind of staying closer to the trunk. I will go up like under, because I think the leaves closest to the trunk and um, kind of up underneath the other leaves is what's the darker shade okay and I'm just kind of stamping away and this really adds that imperfect watercolor kind of look to it since it is so dark and not perfect <laughs> You could do this with some greens. If your trees are still green where you're at and just starting to turn yellow, you could do some greens and yellows. That'd be pretty. So much you can do with it. Because it's such a darker tone, I'm doing mostly third generation. All right. That's how it's coming along so far. Now what I did was took my Spectrum Noir um, tri-blend marker and I have the Earth Brown blend here. Stampin' Up! has a lot of good options for um, their markers that coordinate with their ink pads. I just haven't gotten very many of their inks or markers yet, so use what you have. But if you need markers, definitely check out my website. They have a ton of options and I've heard really good things about them. So now I'm just following the trunk and I like that this marker is dark enough to hide the leaves. So where the trunk is peeking out of the leaves, you can't even see my inking. The last thing I did was took my bluebird or blueberry bushel and a blending brush and I just wiped it off quite a bit and then started going onto my page, just making those circular motions. Again, rub off quite a bit so it's nice and light and then move on to your 
cardstock. Actually, I think this is a little bit darker than my other one, but it'll be all right. And then you can kind of get in between those trees. Just make sure you don't have too much on your brush. You don't want to turn uh, your leaves to green unless that's what you're wanting. And there we go. It just adds that little bit of blue through it. Might even add a little down here. I didn't add any down at the bottom of this one, but let's do that since I did on my other one. There we go. I am building my layout on Sundance. I know usually I use white <laughs> and um, so that would be pumpkin pie if you're using Stampin' Up! colors. And then I am going to do just a fine border of my mocha. Um, I think I want to do about three quarters of an inch showing and then just a super fine, maybe eighth of an inch showing before my white. So I am going to be doing a frame style. So my white is 10 and a half by 11 and a quarter. And actually, I think I should have done the mocha that size yeah so I'm actually going to be trimming my white down just a little bit more so my mocha is going to be ten and a half by eleven and a quarter I am running a little low on my mocha paper so I am going to cut the senders out of these so that I can use them for photo mats or embellishments or whatever else I may need and since I'm only doing like that eighth of an inch border I'm only gonna go up a half inch rather than that full inch I normally do. So then I'm gonna go over a half inch and then I'm gonna save a half inch on that side. Go up a half inch, save a half inch on that side and over an in a half inch to that side. And we'll just work our way all the way around. And now we have this full center piece to use for other things. Have my frames down. Got that down. Now we do have these that can go across. So I'm picturing kind of like that maybe. And then we could have a transition strip going across here. I think I'm liking that. So then we just need to decide which side we're going to cut the trees off and I think this side and this side would be good. So those are 11 inches. I have just a quarter inch of paprika cardstock and that's just going to be my transition piece since I have paprika in my trees here. And I'm just using my Barely Art Glue to get that down. I cut a few photo mats. I don't have photos for this layout yet. Sometimes I just get creative ideas and I don't have photos so I just want to be creative and sometimes it's fun to just take that pressure off. I don't know about you, but sometimes when my photos are so good or I have high expectations for my photos, my layouts are almost stressful to put together. Like I almost have more fun when I'm not scrapbooking any particular photos. So that's just kind of what this is. I had this idea and I'm just trying to bring it to life and I can always add more embellishments titles more to it when I actually add my story and my photos I'm not laying these directly down on my white sometimes when you ink around the edges it um, 
leaves marks on your paper. It doesn't dry immediately, so I'm just setting these aside to dry. Let me know in the comments, do you ever create layouts without your photos or do you always have your photos printed? I'd like to know. Oh, I forgot to do this one. Oh, no, I didn't. It's done. <laughs> I just couldn't tell that it was done until I brought it over to my white. Okay. I cut this from my Cricut and I did eight inches. So I'm thinking of putting that somewhere on this side. I thought maybe it could help hide that tree there that I messed up on. So maybe have it off centered like that. And then I could do like my title here or my photo here or my photo over on this side to help hide that tree. Maybe I do like it more centered like that. Okay, that might work. And then I have these photo mats. And I was thinking kind of a grid style like that. From the changing leaves, I love this. I've seen so many cool things done with this. Um, it comes with, and I don't have them in here because I was playing with them. It comes with the hybrid folder. So this is the embossing folder, which you can obviously use just to emboss leaves on your background, which I want to do that in the upcoming video too. I think that'll be super cool. And then, this lays perfectly inside here. It just kind of snaps into place. So, ah, if I can get it lined up. Okay, so it just snaps right into place there. You put your piece of cardstock here, close it up, run it through, and it typically does not shift, but because I'm showing you, it is. <laughs> and then it cuts and embosses at the same time. It is so cool. So then these three leaves come out. And I did that with white cardstock. And then I went over it with some ink. And I used paprika and Sundance. So here's the three leaves that it cuts and embosses for you. And then because this whole thing embosses, you get all these leaves too, which do not cut out with the die cuts, but I went through and I fussy cut them just with my micro tip scissors. I went through and I fussy cut. So you can see this one came from over here. And then I have these ones that came from here. Some of them are cut off, like this one, but I think that was like up here somehow, right there maybe, but I can tuck that under. So I still used that. And then this was part of the die cut so that one I didn't have to fussy cut. This one I did fussy cut. Look at the texture of those though. Aren't they so cool? And all I did to add the ink was I took my blending brushes and I started with the paprika and I just went right in the middle and then I brought in my Sundance and I went right around the edges and then I would kind of go back and forth between the two colors to blend them out. So none are exactly the same but I used the same colors so they coordinate but some of them have more yellow, some of them have more paprika. So this is super fun. Another thing I'm wanting to bring in are the die cuts here, which this doesn't match this one. I know it looks like it may cut it out, but it doesn't. It doesn't line up. But I'm going to bring in this one and this one and cut out some gold foil. And this is Stampin' Up! Gold Foil. You've seen me use Stampin' Up!'s gold foil so much. They have the plain sheets, and then they incorporate gold foil into some of their pattern papers, which is just stunning. I've been loving it. So why not add some gold foil to this one too, since that's what we've been playing with lately. Seems like all of my videos have had some gold foil. So I have 
the Stampin' Up! die cut. I just got this. I am so excited. I've been playing with it and trying out the embossing folders and the hybrid folders and I have been loving this. So this is the normal sized. Um, it's still smaller than my other one. I had a really old Spellbinders. Um, but I decided to, since I'm getting all of these embossing folders and hybrids, I really wanted the Stampin' Up! brand. So it closes, I, it closes up nice and compact so you can take it with you. And then you just open up these two sides and it's very, I love it. And it cranks nice. My other one was kind of stiff to crank. This one is really nice. They do have a miniature version too. So this one's already a little more compact than what I'm used to, but then they even have a smaller one. So if you do mostly card making, that would be nice for you or if you're going to crops and whatnot. But I really like this size. These are the mats that come with their machines. And I love that they tell you how to make your sandwich. So I'm just going to do some die cutting. So it says using with thin cuts, you'll put down base number one, base number two, and then it even shows you here using with thin cuts. So if you cover that up, you can still see it. <laughs> and then you put um, base number three, and then you put your paper, your die cuts, or your thin cuts, whichever you call them, and then another base number three. And I'm going to see how I can position these to get the most out of my paper because I think I'm going to do more than just these two. Okay, and then I do like to bring in some washi tape just to hold them in place so that they don't shift because I'm right on the edge of my paper. If they shift even a little bit, I'm going to um, cut off some of the leaf. So then if you kind of stagger them a little bit and don't completely line up your mats, it runs through a little bit nicer. But look at how smooth that is, like butter. I love it. So now, let's see if I can get this out without moving the camera too much. Oh my goodness. Ah. Look at that. We still need to punch out that center there, but isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness. I want to use this on that wedding layout that I have coming up. Ah, that is so pretty. And then you just punch out those centers. All right, I'm going to run this through a couple more times and get some more of these leaves cut. This shifted on me and I almost kind of like it off center like that or kind of Kitty Wampus. Usually I like my photo straight, but we'll kind of start with that. So I'm starting with my larger leaves. And I'm kind of thinking just right around the photo. So what do we have? And then of course I wanna bring in some of this gold. And then I'm thinking maybe one over here, a little cluster, so maybe move this over and I could even bring in a circle die cut. This actually comes with one too, the changing leaves comes with this little circle. That might be too small though. We'll see. But I could do a cluster here. Maybe bring in a different style leaf so that I don't have so much of the same going on. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit. All right, I have my three embellishments. Um, I still need to add adhesive to this one. I am only adding adhesive down to the bottoms of my leaves. I'm just adding it 
like down the stem and then just on the bottom couple leaves just enough to tack it down it's not going anywhere okay so I think right about here with this one and then I kind of want to fill in over here so just a little bit at the bottom we'll go right about there it just adds that extra dimension this almost has some green in it just from the blending I didn't add any green so that's kind of cool I'll maybe have this one come out that direction And then we'll have this one tuck under because it's a straight edge. So we'll just tuck that one right about there. And then I want to spread out my gold. So maybe have another one there and then tuck this one there. It also helps when you're doing layers to not add adhesive on all the ends. I for sure want to add some of these gold texture adhesive back dots. They go nicely with this gold foil and my um, yellow paper. So I'm just going to add some of those to my clusters. You guys, back in the day, I used to be a terrible nail biter. Awful. So over the last couple of years, I finally quit biting my nails. And about a year ago, I was able to grow them out pretty long and then for this wedding I was in last month I was able to paint my own nails and I don't know I've never really been into nails because I never had any I chewed them all off and now I can't even pick anything up and I was used to my long nails now but hopefully I can grow them back out do you guys struggle with nail biting I unfortunately do apparently I was anxious about something I don't know what anyways <laughs> I am going to wait with my title my title would probably look really good right here and then I could even do some word strips or journaling over here or add my journaling here if I only have a few pictures but I think a title would look nice there but I'm going to wait because I don't have my photos for this yet, so I don't know what I want my title to be. I think this layout is finished for now. This was super fun to put together. I will say it did take a couple days. Um, one day I did all these leaves, and then another day I did this pattern paper and put the layout together. So I didn't create all of this all in one day. I did do some inking beforehand and just played around a little bit. But look at the texture and detail of these leaves. I'm in love with this. The changing leaves, stamps, and thin cuts. I haven't played with the stamps yet, but that'll be coming. Trust me, I am loving this so much. And this I cut out on my Cricut. And that gold foil, oh my goodness. Okay, let's go take some fall pictures and get them on this layout. <laughs> Let me know if you want me to record putting the photos on. I know it's kind of fun to see the finished layouts and if I add another title or a title, um, it'd be nice for you guys to see how I incorporate that onto an already finished layout. I hope this brought you inspiration. Everything I used will be linked down below. Until next time, live a life worth scrapping.